Chapter 1, Lesson 8, Roots. You will be able to find square roots and cube roots. And it's a good idea to have your calculator handy for this lesson. A square root of a number is one of its two equal factors. Numbers such as 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25 are called perfect squares because they are squares of integers. Every positive number has both a positive and negative square root. In most real world situations, however, only the positive or principal square root is considered. A radical sign, or what you probably know as a square root sign, is used to indicate the principal square root if n squared equals a, then n equals this symbol right here means plus or minus, which is just saying the positive and negative answer. Let's do some square roots. So the square root of 64 means what number times itself equals 64? And you all should know that that is 8. However, um, actually it's just looking for the positive, so just 8. Letter B, square root of 1.21. Find the square root symbol on your calculator, which would be right here. Hit second and this button to get the square root button symbol. And then type in 1.21. When you do that, you will automatically get the positive or principal root. However, it's asking for both the positive and negative. And all you do is rewrite it with a negative because negative 1.1 times negative 1.1 is also positive 1.21. So both of those are your answers. When you get to fractions, first of all, it wants the negative answer. What you can do is find the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. If it gives you fractions, I want a fraction answer. So negative the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 36 is 6. So the answer for this one is negative 5 over 6. Letter D. Again, this one I want you to put in your calculator and see what happens. When you type in square root of negative 16, you're going to get an error, and here's why. There are no real roots. Nothing times itself will give you a negative 16. No real number times itself will give you a negative 16. Letter E. Again, it's in fraction form, so I want a fractional answer. Square root of 9 over square root of 16. Square root of 9 is 3, Square root of 16 is 4. So the answer is 3 fourths. Letter F, I want both the positive and the negative. So type in square root of 0.81. And you will get 0 0.9, which is the principal or positive root. To write the negative root, we rewrite it with a negative symbol. Letter G, I want the negative root of square root of 49, and square root of 49 is 7, so the negative root is negative 7. And letter H, plug it into your calculator. We run into a similar situation as a previous example that you will get an error because there are no real roots. You will learn about these types of numbers in high school. Letter I. When we get to solving, when you solve, you want the positive and the negative answer. So here we have t squared equals 169. You need to take the square root, because the opposite of a square is the square root. You're left with t equals, 
And the square root of 169 is 13 and negative 13. You will have two answers. Don't forget to write both. Again, when you're solving an equation, you need to write both roots. Letter J, 289 equals A squared. To get rid of a square, we square root. The square root of 289 is 17 and negative 17, and that equals A. Letter K, M squared equals 0 0.09. Find the square root. M equals 0 0.3 and negative 0 0.3. This time we have a fraction. Y squared equals 4 over 25, which means I want a fractional answer. So square root, numerator and denominator, y equals two-fifths and negative two-fifths. Cube roots. Numbers such as 8, 27, and 64 are perfect cubes because they are cubes of integers. So for example, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the third power, 2 cubed, so the cube root of 8 is simply 2. Same thing with 27. 27 is the same thing as 3 cubed, so the cube root of 27 is 3. And 64 is the same thing as 4 cubed, so the cube root of 64 is 4. The symbol, right here, it's got a little 3, up there, it's the square root symbol, but it has a little three. That means a cube root. It's used to indicate a cube root of a number. If n to the third power equals a, a number to the third power, then n equals the cube root of a. Now in this case, you only have one answer with cube roots. Because cube roots can be negative or positive, they won't be both. Because you're multiplying three numbers together, instead of 2. When you are finding cube roots on your calculator, for example, the cube root of 125, on your calculator, you're going to type in the 3 for cube root. You're then going to hit second, and this caret button. Above the caret button is an x cube root. Okay, that means, or an x root, excuse me, that means you can make it whatever you want. By us putting the 3 here in the calculator, it'll make it a cube root. So you should have that symbol or something similar on your calculator, and then type in the, what's underneath, the 125. So the cube root of 125 is 5. Not positive and negative, just simply 5. Letter B, cube root of negative 27. Again, type in 3, hit the second caret button, and type in negative 27. And you'll get an answer of negative 3. Letter C, cube root of 729, type it in your calculator, you will get 9. Again, there's only ever one answer for cube roots. Letter D, cube root of negative 64, type it in, you'll get an answer of negative 4. Letter E, cube root of 1,000. You will get an answer of positive 10. 
cube root of 216 is 6. Cube root of negative 125 is negative 5. And the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And again, let me just take H and re-explain. What this means is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 equals negative 8. Well, let's check it. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Bring down your last um, number. And 4 times negative 2 is, in fact, negative 8. Let's solve some equations. Dylan has a planter in the shape of a cube that holds 8 cubic feet of potting soil. Solve the equation 8 equals s cubed to find the side length s of the container. So to get rid of a cube, we cube root it. Make sure you put that 3 above your square root. So it's like a square root symbol, only it has the extra 3 there. Type it in your calculator. You get 2 equals s. And we are talking about feet, so each side length is 2 feet. Okay, an aquarium in the shape of a cube that will hold 25 gallons of water has a volume of 3.375 cubic feet. Solve s cubed equals 3.375 to find the length of one side of the aquarium. So s cubed equals 3.375. To get rid of a cube, we cube root both sides to get our s isolated. Type it in your calculator, cube root of 3.375, and we get 1.5. Again, our unit is feet, so 1.5 feet is the length of the side of the aquarium.